Back pain affects over 600 million people worldwide. Billions are wasted annually on treatments, medications, and lost time at work. But here's what's crazy. Brand new studies have found that walking can slash your risk of developing back pain, keep it from coming back, and potentially even help you get rid of it. I'm gonna break down just how many walking steps are needed in this video. You might be suffering from lower back pain, and I know how annoying it is. I've had lower back pain myself for the last two years, and I found that walking and a couple other things finally helped me get it under control. So if you have back pain, or know someone who does, I'm here to guide you. In this video, I'm gonna uncover the ideal number of steps you need to stop back pain. And I'm gonna shed some light on the 10,000 step goal. I'm gonna tell you how to cut your back pain by 25%. I'm gonna tell you how to double your days spent back pain free. I'm gonna share with you the actual way I fixed my back pain. And finally, I'm gonna cover the ideal amount of steps needed for you to stop back pain. So let's get started. You've probably heard the common advice, walk 10,000 steps per day. Sounds like a lot, right? Well, the good news is that a new study found that you might not need that many. In fact, just about 4,000 steps per day is all that's needed to reduce your risk of dying from any cause. That's far less than the famous 10,000 step rule. And guess what? Every thousand steps over 4,000 gives you an additional 15% decrease in all-cause mortality. And the researchers saw no upper limit on these benefits. People walking up to 20,000 steps per day kept getting benefits. So the whole 10,000 step number was never a scientifically proven number. It was a nice round goal. But is it a number to totally forget? I'm gonna circle back to this in a minute. By the way, hit like and subscribe. So let's get into this brand new study I mentioned. The research literally just came out and this is important for anyone who's worried about getting back pain or maybe even those who already have it. The study was done in Norway in 2025 and it was just published. The result, those who walked a lot had a 23% lower risk of developing chronic back pain compared to those who walked less. That's almost a quarter reduction in risk. What about how you walk? The researchers looked at walking intensity, basically whether you stroll leisurely or you walk at a brisk pace. Turns out, that walking at a moderate pace was enough to get the benefits. You don't need to speed walk. So the key is consistency and duration, not speed. That's great news, because it means you can take a comfortable walk and still protect your back. Now, what if you already had back pain and managed to recover? You definitely don't want it to come back. But back pain has a nasty habit of returning. About seven in 10 people who had back pain have a flare up within a year. That's a huge percentage. But here's some really encouraging news. Another study found that walking can nearly cut in half your risk risk of back pain returning. Yes, that's like a 50% reduction in recurrence. People that walk three to five times a week stayed pain-free much longer than those who didn't. One of the lead authors of the study said that we don't know why exactly walking is so good at preventing back pain. It's likely to include the combination of gentle oscillatory movements, loading and strengthening the spinal structures and muscles, relaxation and stress relief, and the release of feel-good endorphins. I love feel-good endorphins. <laughs> so if you've gotten past a bout of back pain, make walking a regular habit to keep it from flaring up Again. So in my case, let me tell you the story of how I got my back injured and then how I got it under control. I was visiting my sister and her family in Austin, Texas, and I was coaching my nephew who was eight years old at the time about how to be a good football player. So I put a good juke move on him. <laughs> and I promptly went to the ground. Now these things can be really serious, but I've had a lot of injuries in my career. I've had a torn ACL, broken fibula, hyperextended elbow, hip pointer, concussion. So I'm like an injury expert, most football players are. But I knew that this was a muscle problem and not a joint problem. Over the last couple years, I've had a sore lower back every morning when I wake up. And the key moment for me was when I realized that I have to put some attention to this matter to get it fixed. So I researched the exact problem and I found a couple solutions that I could actually put into action. I had to stop my spinal loading at the gym, lighten up a little bit, and I added a few stretches as well. I stopped running every day and introduced walking as part of my daily routine, as part of a sustainable, low-impact exercise. I also took a look at my daily posture and realized I was sitting a lot while I was working, at home on the couch, and so I did some research and found that I needed to stand up every 30 minutes and do some stretches. I also bought this really great lumbar support pillow for my chair that has kept me mindful of my posture when I'm sitting. Because I really know if you sit there long enough, you can just slouch over like this. It's not a good look. I have an affiliate link down in the description if you're interested. But the real story here is that my attention finally paid to this matter. I credit to fitness prudence. That's one of my four fitness virtues. What is fitness prudence? It means turning your attention to what really matters and acting in proportion to it. In fitness, it's about finding the right path to your solution. In my case, prudence meant taking the time to understand the issue. Self-reflection. Why does my back hurt? Where is the pain? What exactly is the problem? And what action should I take? So 
if you have back pain, instead of putting it off, start to ask questions and gather knowledge about the problem. Have a dialogue with a friend or a doctor, or even do some reading from reliable sources. Because if you understand the root cause better, you can choose the right exercises and treatments. Before I tell you how many steps you need to fix your back pain, I'm just gonna list the three other fitness virtues of mine. Temperance, this relates to your nutrition and having a balance in moderation. Saying no to things can actually be a moment for personal growth. Fortitude, means sticking to the plan even when the going gets tough. And justice, that means self-accountability, following through with your steps, your sets, your reps, accounting for the right amount of calories you're eating without cheating or fudging the numbers. We don't want any accounting scandals when it comes to tracking your macros. So if you follow these virtues, you're in good shape. Okay, now that we've got to the bottom of back pain, what are the ideal amount of steps for you to prevent back pain? I'm gonna break it down by threshold. And remember, the steps can vary from person to person because of fitness level, pace, and stride length. Here we go. The first milestone is 2,000 steps per day. That's about 20 minutes. This is where you reduce the risk of back pain coming back by 50%, and potentially the threshold from preventing it in the first place. The second milestone to aim for is 4,000 steps. That's about 40 minutes. This will significantly improve your health if you hit this mark daily. And remember, every thousand extra steps over this adds a 15% improvement in reduced all-cause mortality. And remember, the study did not find an upper limit on this number. The third milestone is 10,000 steps, which is an hour and 40 minutes. The Norway study found that if you walk this much, you are 23% less likely to develop back pain. And remember, this number can be broken up throughout the day. Walk a little in the morning, some at noon, some in the evening, you just have to total 10,000. And then the God tier is 20,000 steps. At this level, researchers were still seeing increased benefits of reduced all-cause mortality. So the takeaway is that the more fit you are, the more likely you are to reduce and avoid back pain and live longer. And walking is the easiest and happiest way for you to get fit and get rid of pain. So if you have back pain right now, work on cultivating that fitness virtue of prudence. Spend some time analyzing the problem, consult with other people, and plan some actions going forward to fix it. Walking can be part of easing the pain and keeping it from coming back. And it turns out that according to this new study, 10,000 steps might actually be back on your radar again as a daily goal if stopping back pain is important to you. So if you know someone who has back pain or has a sedentary lifestyle, share this video with them to help them find the prudent path to their health and longevity. That was a lot, so let's recap the points I just covered. 4,000 steps a day significantly reduces all-cause mortality. Number two, walking dramatically increases your back health. If you walk 100 minutes a day, you have a 23% lower risk of developing back pain. Number three, walking helps back pain from coming back. Three to five walks per week halves the chance of back pain returning. Number four, taking the time and attention to address your fitness problems is cultivating prudence. And five, the ideal number of steps, 2K, 4K, 10K, and 20K to keep the back pain away. I hope you found this information helpful and encouraging. If you did, give my video a big thumbs up and consider sharing this video. It might really help someone out a lot. Hit subscribe. And if you have any questions or you wanna share your own personal story, drop it in the comments. The collective wisdom that we all have might be able to help someone else out who has tried a lot of different things and not able to actually fix the problem. You might be able to help them if you share your story in the comments. And if you're just starting your fitness journey, or maybe you're gonna get back in shape soon, I've picked out some great products that I have affiliate links for down in the description below. A friend of mine told me in the comments that she has some shoes that she just bought, and they're sitting there waiting for her as she heals up from a plantar fasciitis problem. And the cool thing about products is they can act as a symbol, a symbol of your aspiration. So that new pair of shoes can sit there and inspire you to get motivated to go out and use them. Remember how I said back pain affects hundreds of millions of people? Sometimes the solution isn't some fancy treatment or some medication, but a simple habit. Walking can be the easiest prescription for a healthier, pain-free back. Now get out there and take a walk. Your back is gonna thank you.